and welcome to Design Education Talks, the collaboration with the New Art School and Design Deluxe Podcast. Our guest today is Gizem Aitash. Welcome, Gizem. Hello. Fantastic to have you here. Thank you. It's very nice to be here. Tell us about you and your work. Okay. Um, first, I want to thank you for having me, and, and, and I, I admire what you do, because it's the collaboration uh, with so many people is important on this subject, I think, and it's very precious what you do, so okay. I want to thank you about, for this. Um, I graduated from interior architecture and environmental design, and then I studied uh, design, culture, and management in 2000. And it was a multidisciplinary approach to design. And, and after that, I think I started to see things as a design process and my life also. And um, I quit jobs and left projects, but um, I left my comfort zone, I mean. Uh, every time I learn something about the project, I finish the project and start a new one. So I suddenly realized that it's learning is what I like. When something is monotonous, I try to change change it. And um, it kind of helps helped me, I think, to see the big picture. And I started working on a children's project in 2012. Uh, we were trying to open a children's space in Istanbul, uh, and I visited Stade Enfants. That's a center in Paris, and it's very different, and it's very um, different approach of uh, children's play. And I visited Kidzenia, and then I designed the children floor for a stamp museum and um, uh, as an interior architect. But I put some uh, play and some uh, experience inside of this uh, interior design. That's how, that's how I, I think, started to design, play, and uh, connect this with learning and children. And these were around 2012. And then um, I realized it is, we change our forms every two, three years. And, uh, but the education system hasn't been changed for the last 150 years, maybe. And the technological developments are so fast, but the system is kind of uh, slow if you compare it to this, what's going, going on in the world. And um, so how we sit and learn didn't change. And all these ideas somehow uh, got together. Uh, and uh, of course, I learned from some people. I watched videos about education and I start reading about education and the system. Uh, and in 2015, um, I saw an old toy, very old toy, and I started thinking that might be something that I could use to teach design, design thinking and creativity. And so I work on this project and I designed my own uh, tool. It's a paper toy. And then, um, I got my uh, brand and uh, design registrations, then uh, started doing workshops with children from 6 to 12 years old. Um, in the beginning, it was a process where I didn't know how to teach. So for two years, um, I was into this uh, kind of a research, I think, uh, and worked with children over thousand children then try to see how I can reach them and how I can make them uh, think more creatively because these classes are mixed it's like six and 12 years old playing together and it's usually like 25 children together in a circle in a round table where they get to see each other talk to each other there's always chaos in the workshop because it's free to talk and free to run, free to sing, free to do anything. It's not a, like a typical classroom. So it's, um, I watch them, how they play with the toy, what are they capable of doing. And that leads me to a workshop content at the end of this two years time. 
So now I have my own, I think, um, teaching method. Uh, it's one and a half hour uh, a workshop. And I start doing this workshop with uh, university, university students, students also, also in Turkey. In Turkey. After, uh, at my third year, I think. Um, so it's, uh, the name of the toy is uh, GOM in Turkish. Uh, but it, in China, they say it's G-O-M. So I think it's better if, you, I, if I say it in English, like G-O-M. Mm. G-O-M means a geometrical model making or object making. Uh, because, because this toy lets you, um, it's only circles. This is what you get uh, inside the package. It's only circles and you can tear these circles from uh, each other and you, you can, can fold them in different uh, ways where you get to have squares and triangles. So you have this uh, common geometrical shapes where you can do all platonic solids in math and then it's infinitive because it's a modular system so when you have squares triangles and circles uh, it it gets it's you get to do you know um, stars or cubes and after that children um, design their own dream model uh, they do hats masks they even try to design a dinosaur because their imagination is far beyond um, grown-ups' imagination. Uh, so, um, what can I tell you? I look at my notes. Oh, and I, um, I start doing these workshops at the museums and schools and um, I work with municipalities and children play centers. Um, and I design uh, sometimes according to the subject. For example, if it's a children's day, we design something for that day. Or if it's New Year's Eve, we design something for the Christmas tree, for example. Mm -hmm. So I, I, this is this a workshop, one and a half hours. But there are some activities that I do separately according to these occasions. Um, our slogan is... Um, Wise up to geometry, and um, because Platon says at the entrance of the first academy, let no one ignorant of geometry enter. And what I realized in, especially in Turkish education system, um, children do not think it's very difficult for them to think the third dimension, to imagine something that's not real on earth. For example, a cube, this is not real. You have to dream about this in your head in, in order to understand the third dimension in geometry. So this is, this is something missing. I mean, a hands-on activity, model making is missing in our education system. So I want them to uh, learn this before the university level. Okay. Be, um, so I, I think this is the beginning of design education where you get to think the third dimension, the three-dimensional objects when you try to start dreaming about it. This is the first step, I think, because I remember myself the first year of interior architecture trying to do models, but it was too difficult for me. I was, you know, I wasn't capable of using my hands that well. Mm. And um, so if you start to doing this at six years old, it gets you somewhere at the university, a very high level, mm. and you start questioning uh, and uh, try to see things differently, I think. Uh, so that's why our slogan is uh, Wise Up to Geometry. Um, and we sit in circles, as I said, we learn from each other. There is no hierarchy in the classroom. Uh, I only answer the questions. I don't, anyone could design anything. There is no wrong. Uh, if they ask me, if, oh, teacher, did I do this wrong? I said, yes, everything is right if you, if you did it. Uh, so so it, it's, it's, it's kind, kind of a, a self-esteem. Self they need, need to improve. improve. Mm -hmm. um, so I'm only mentoring them during the classroom. Um, 
What else can I tell you? Okay, what GOM does is like, um, it's a hands-on activity. So it works on this fine motor skills in children. And uh, as I read from the neuroscientists, the brain uh, grows while using your hands. I mean, when you do things with your hands, it helps your brain to grow and make you smarter because the neurons get connections uh, with seeing your hands during childhood. Um, I think this is another thing that makes me um, try to do uh, with the kids, kids. Uh, also. Um, what can I tell you? How, uh, how does you adapt or how was the difference between teaching this in the younger children and in higher education? At the university level, yes. you mean? Um, children are more uh, imaginative. Mm. They dream better. Uh, they ask questions that the university level didn't even think about. For example, once a four-year-old designed a robot mm. out of squares and it had hands like this. There were two squares on top of each other and two square, squares here doing this. And as I asked, what is this? And he goes, oh, this is a robot to uh, collect garbage in, in the streets. So that's a four-year-old, a very clever one, no, of, of course. of course, but, but what I'm saying is... But when, can... when you go to the university level, hmm. this imagination does not yeah. exist because the system makes you, um, put you in a box, uh, divide the lessons into boxes, math, physics, arts, music, like they are all separated, which they don't, they are not. And you start only answering the question. It's a test-based education. But before that level, when you're a children, you're free to think more um, imaginative. Yes, I, I completely agree with you. My question is, how can we help mm -hmm. those in higher education that have gone through the system? And how can your methodology help those that didn't have the chance to play while they were six and 12, but they are now in higher education and they need to be thinking creatively. So how can yeah. we help those with your system? Um, what I do, I have this uh, two hours of a seminar, like a lesson. Mm. I uh, try to first uh, teach them what creativity is. Um, how can they try to, how can they think out of the box? Okay. And, and I start this uh, series with uh, this sentence, which I think it's kind of shakes them in the classroom. I say first, if you want to be in this um, design business, you have to like it. You have to love it. Yeah. Otherwise, just quit and find something else because yeah. this is hard work yeah. and it has lots of responsibilities to human, human beings. And the second I say, everything you love is going to die, even you. And if you want to leave something to this world, you have to make it creative and you, make it, you have to make a difference. And that's how I'm going to you know, tell you about creativity and how it, that's important. So after this two hours of a seminar, uh, I give examples of, of good designs, bad designs, what design is, the history of design, very small um, um, shape, um, very small, very summary, yeah. uh, not the whole, but they get the idea. And then I start uh, working on this model. Yeah. And I can tell you that some university level uh, children do not know the opening of a cube and at the first year of college. Yeah. So this also helps them. I don't know how they got there <laughs> without knowing yeah. this really... Um, very uh, um, um, easy thing, but um, since we, we think that math is, is a separate thing from design or art is a separate thing from design, so they look at math as something that you have to solve a function, mm -hmm. which math is something that you see, how you see the world, it's patterns, it's, mm -hmm. uh, it's, it's how you uh, look at the things and name them. Um, Absolutely. Yeah, so Absolutely. I try to connect these multidisciplinary uh, things at the university level and 
tell them that they are not separated and they have to feed themselves from arts and from philosophy and from business and from maths and all these transdisciplinary and multidisciplinary subjects so that they can design something that that that's a worth like this um, that that is a good design at the mm. end so it's it's a little complicated at the university level but but that's where we need the help because of course yeah. of course we can we can help the new generations by starting them from from childhood and that's the, that's the best because all the problems stem from Start the early years yeah. and if we can help them at the early years then they'll be even better at the university but how can we help you know we need also need to help those that are already at university yeah and they didn't but have lots a chance of people are working on that level i mean i i not many people working where i work that, at that age group yeah so i left that area i mean i try i work on that area also but i find it more challenging to make the new generation be better when they are at the university. And one thing in Turkey, maybe it's not for all the countries, but um, we didn't really know what we choose at the university. Yeah. I mean, you start your school, but you don't know your talents or your gifts. Uh, you are a taste-based based, um, education where you are, if you're good at math, you pass your class, then you become an architect. But you need other things. So. Um, For the future of the country also, the new generation must be, if you really look at them and see their talents and gifts and capabilities, they get to choose the, the, the right business for them, the right school, the right um, uh, job. Yeah. Is. So that's, um, and I'm good with children. I mean, I, I am, um, I like to play with children. It's not yeah. like something I, like doing so that's why i i chose i chose to play with them it's, so i feel better when uh, doing that so so what is creativity according to you okay um creativity is something that um you uh, it's very difficult i have this turkish sentence i use all the time I'm not, let me translate it it's something that you do that crashes the old system The old thoughts show you a new thing which you didn't see before, and it works. Mm -hmm. uh, there's some. There's nothing that you you know you uh, you can't uh, say bad stuff about what happens at the end. But it crashes an old thinking, an old uh, structure, maybe. So okay. it's it's something new. Some people says it's the connection of thoughts. Um, You, you put them together in a way that nobody thought before. I mean, there are thoughts, of course, we read. I mean, I read Don Norman, Buckminster Fuller, Sir Ken Robinson, um, Popanek. Of course, we feed from lots of different people. And then at the end, we, we take these ideas and connect them in a way that nobody thought before. Yeah. Um, and it, it's something that you... Um, that you do with your heart and with your brain, I think, because you have to feel um, the sense of the future, the sense the world is going where and how, and you ask questions. And when you do something creative and it works, that's probably a futuristic thinking because it's going to change the world. It's going to make something new out of it. And that's how everything... Um, I think uh, goes on like I think scientists are very creative also mm -hmm. because you have to think creatively in order to solve those problems and find new solutions absolutely absolutely so yeah. so could your methodology enter more into other areas of art and design as well do you see it sort of at university going more and, and how how can how can this happen um, it can be used as in art classes also, because when I, when I teach, for example, um, I have this very simple uh, thing that I tell children. This is a cube in math. Okay, it's a third dimensional um, geometrical object. But I, if I draw a cube, the Eschart, you know Eschart? Yes. An artist. Yes. Where, you, where he made these cubes 
it's infinitive cubes. That's art. Or I can make a square um, table, put a glass on top of it, and give it a function where it becomes a furniture. And that's design, where you put the function. So art, math, and design are things in common and things that are really separated from each other. Once you understand this at the lowest level, the, the basic, that's why I gave the example of a cube. At the university level, you can compare and see what you see is goes where, what's function, what's art, what's math, and how they connect and how they separate from each other. I don't know if it's the answer oh, absolutely, to your Absolutely, absolutely, absolutely. So how, how did you get into teaching? How, how did you get into this? What led you to this? Um, well, I find myself teaching because yeah. I started just um, playing with my cousins first. I have seven cousins starting from five, five years old to 15 years old. So when I first designed the toy, uh, GOM, I started uh, playing with them. Um, I think that's how I started teaching. Then, uh, as I told you before, I did these two years of workshops with kids, kids at schools and in yeah. at different places. And I um, worked with some teachers also and read about pedagogy and how I could um, talk to kids and what I should say and what not to say. Um, so, but it's not really teaching what I do. I think it's more mentoring okay. because I left them uh, free uh, most of the time. And if, if uh, anyone wants to see what how children uh, design things, it, I have this Instagram page where the, they can uh, see the masks and hats and everything that the children uh, design. Absolutely. Fantastic. Yeah. So what other projects are you currently working on? Um, I start working on this um, test, uh, multi-intelligence test. Um, it's like an um, algorithm where... I asked um, 50 questions during the workshop and um, when they answer those questions uh, I have this test where I can measure their multiple intelligences in a percentage where they have how much percentage of, of a kinesthetic intelligence, how much analytic, how much verbal so on but it's not easy to um, work because of the pandemic uh, so it's really slow now uh, but um, I want to design another like a, a gom second I have the drawings and everything so I might come up with a, a second toy where it is um, uh, other geometrical uh, things that you can make fantastic fantastic yeah. So how can our viewers and listeners find you? Um, through, I think, um, my email and my Instagram, I think. It's um, G-O-M-Y-A-P. Um, the, if they hashtag uh, this word, which is very hard in Turkey, so I don't know if anyone can understand that when I say it, but blog. I think you, you have it written. G-O-M? G-O-M-Y-A-P. Y-A-P. Y-A-P is, in Turkish, means uh, make. Fantastic. So G-O-M, make, make G-O-M, uh, making. Yes. Uh, but um, I should have named it in English, maybe. No, no, it's fine, it's fine. <laughs> you, you can also get an English word, fantastic. Yeah. fantastic. So if you hashtag this in, um, uh, in uh, Google, yeah. if you write this down, there are YouTube videos where we can watch. There are Instagram, there is a web page. Uh, it's also on sale where you can buy the product also. Um, and um, what else do I have? Um, that's all I think. Yeah, web page and Instagram mostly I use and YouTube. Excellent. Any, any last advice you'd like to leave us with? Yeah. Um, um, I think um, everyone is a designer, as Don Norman says and Popanek says. Uh, and it will be good if we try to solve our real-world real problems. problems. Um, humanity is a little selfish, and this capitalist system left us with 
too many bad designed products mm. and um, climate change is real uh, and uh, the children are more aware of it uh, because I know I talk to them all the time but the grown-ups are more um, doesn't sure doesn't do much about it but um, it's their future and we are leaving them with a really uh, broken planet uh, so we have to leave our comfort zones like you do like most people do in design I think in some other areas and um, we have to start working on something that works for the better good and for the old humans uh, it's uh, it's leave your selfishness and become more responsible I should say Fantastic, fantastic. Okay. Thank you so much, Kizem. Thank you yeah, for coming. Thank you. Pleasure to have you. All the best. Thank Bye. you.